Uh, taking a look at the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, a year ago at this time, believe it or not, they were 50-1 to to win this year's NBA title with the Hawks at 60-1. to Well, that was obviously before the LeBron James trade. Now they're at roughly 9-5 to or 2-1. to And this Cleveland team, it's really not the same team right now that began the season. They did have uh, some problems starting with the chemistry and on defense, but they really turned it around and have been the team to beat, as you guys mentioned, uh, up until very recently. So everything's clicking for them. You got LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. However, Jeff, it's a team that is better now because of some uh, midseason acquisitions. Yeah, beginning of the season, the two main concerns were the health of LeBron James. He had back and knee injuries. Plus, the defense wasn't very good. But they made these trades in January. They got uh, J.R. Smith and Shepard. And, and now it's, it, it's, it's really a, a big improvement, although they're still like, I think they're like 18th in the league in defense, but they, they made a big improvement on defense, and that's been the, the biggest difference. That's why I think that the, the, it, they'll go far in the playoffs. Also, the Eastern Conference is so weak that the, it, you don't have to be a great team to get far in that conference. But uh, J.R. Smith, uh, not only has he helped on defense, uh, he's also helped on offense. The other day he, was, he shot 17 times. They were all three-point attempts, and he made eight of them. That was, that was an all-time record in most three-point attempts. Uh, without a without a two point attempt in a game, so uh, he's helped out in, in other ways too. So uh, again, they're on a 31 and seven run. They're just 38 and 39 because of spread this year. They haven't really been a good spread team. But right now, I'd say the Cavaliers are the favorites to end up in the finals for the Eastern Conference, just because uh, they're peaking. Uh, they're solve their defensive issues. LeBron James is healthy, and it's a weak conference. So that, that's pretty much uh, what I would say about the Cavaliers there. Yeah, I agree with you on the Cavaliers. I mean, LeBron James, and history shown itself, he's been in the finals pretty much four straight years now. Won, won the two, lost against the Mavericks and Spurs last year, so they're probably going to get back. Um, I do think the Bulls are more of a serious threat than people think. Uh, I like their size, their experience, and they've upgraded. You know, they plan for Derrick Rose being out, and I think they've upgraded in the backcourt um, with having uh, Brooks and some of their other players getting minutes. Uh, Snell's getting minutes, and Jimmy Butler's obviously back and healthy. Uh, Noah should be ready to go, and who knows, Rose is supposed to play this week, so uh, I think the Bulls are, would be the only other team I would look at coming out of this conference. All right, yeah, some of the defensive numbers for the Cavaliers are disturbing. They've been bottom 10 in field goal shooting defense allowed. A little bit misleading as they were really bad early on, and they've been better uh, down the stretch. Uh, keep in mind that when the Cavaliers have two days of rest, they're 37 of 14 over the total because there's no offensive problems at all with this team. And also, if you're looking at them to get there to the NBA Finals as the best team in the East, they have dominated the West 12 and 2 against the spread when the Cavaliers face uh, the Western Conference. All right, let's look at the uh, the team that Zach just mentioned, Chicago. Uh, that is a, a team that's currently in third place in the East, but uh, boy, it's a team that I'm not sure I would want to face them in the postseason. Offense has improved from a year ago because they added Pau Gasol and this rookie, Nicolo Mirotic, who's 6'10", 10 points and five rebounds per game, but it's really the, the defense that is still the heart and soul of the Bulls, and the, the numbers show that. Tenth in points allowed once again. Tom Thibodeau demands great defense. They're also seventh in field goal shooting defense. Derrick Rose, you don't know whether he's going to be there. However, Jeff, with or without Rose, uh, with or without Rose, the Bulls, it's a tough playoff matchup for anybody. Yeah, they're always a tough playoff matchup, but uh, they always, something always happens. They either... Uh they always have injury problems. They're not a good offensive team. They shoot they, right now. They're shooting 44 percent from the field. Derrick Rose is always a question mark if he's going to play or not. Uh, of course, this year they do have you know they got Gasol and uh, Jimmy Butler is you know doing a great job of guard leading the team 20.1 points per game, and but uh, and they're only 36 of 41 against the spread. But I, I just this team just doesn't seem to have what it takes to get over the top every year. Something. Uh, something always happens. And it's usually the, the lack, lack of offense or a big injury or something. So uh, right now, I, I would still favor the Cavaliers over the Bulls in, the, in this conference for, for those reasons. Like the Cavaliers right now are, are, are playing well. The Bulls are kind of they're done with it in the last couple of years. They're kind of they're a good team, but not a great team. And, uh, and that's why I would, I would favor the, the Cavaliers over the Bulls right now, Zach. Yeah, I just talked about them, and uh, like I said, I would only have the Bulls as the only contender for the Cavaliers if I was going to go place a wager. 
Um, just for those reasons, there should be value on the Bulls. Um, only two to one on the Cavaliers. I'm not sure what the Bulls are right now, but uh, what to win it all or no, just the conference. Conference would be well, half of uh, almost even money. Yeah. Oh, even, the, oh, the Bulls, you mean? Yeah. The Bulls. Oh, uh, well, actually, Bulls are eighteen to one to win the whole thing, so they'd be nine to one. Nine to one to win the conference, so not the best of value considering their injury bug and whatnot. But one that that might might put a small small wager on. Just the experience um, seen before, even against the Heat when they didn't have uh, Derrick Rose, they played well, and I just I just think they have better guard play this time around uh, to to play well in the playoffs. Well, I will second uh, both of those because it seems like we're we're all leaning toward the Bulls and the Cavaliers to be uh, able to defeat a team like Atlanta. So th those are the teams that we're looking at. And I'll, I'll third that. I think the Chicago team is very dangerous. They always play that great defense. And here's a stat that really stands out. Bulls are 20-8 and eight under the total on the road against a team with a winning home record. Well, in the playoffs, you're going to face plenty of teams that have home records. They bring that great defense on the road with them, which you have to do to compete in the playoffs and on the road. Very good overall road record. Uh, seventh in the NBA in field goal shooting defense. And people might not know this. This team is really strong at the free throw line. Top five all season. If games are close, this team is not a liability at the line. One final point about the uh, Bulls to keep in mind is they did play the Cleveland Cavaliers back in 2010 in the first round. And it was, you, you'll probably hear that come up again if they play because Joachim Noah made comments, disparaging remarks about the city of Cleveland, saying, you know, nobody wants to go here or vacation here. And he received some, uh, some stuff about it. And he, I'm sure that's going to come up if and when they play, which is a likely playoff scenario. And uh, what people might not remember, though, is there wasn't even a close series. It was a, a five-game series. Cleveland smoked Chicago. So, uh, and that, that was a series where LeBron James sat out the last four games of the regular season. That might happen again to give him some rest. And then they absolutely rolled over Chicago. So that's something to keep in mind uh, when, they, if, when and if they meet in the playoffs. All right, well, let's take a look at the last team uh, in the East that is in this top four bracket here, Toronto Raptors. They went from 50 to 1 a year ago to winning the NBA title. <clears throat> now they're 75 to 1, so they're not getting much respect uh, here in Vegas. It's a team that is uh, very good at home, but roughly 500 on the road. Offensive numbers are terrific with their young three-guard attack and DeRozan and Lowry and Williams. On the other hand, they have some uh, defensive liability. So, uh, Jeff, uh, what do you make of this Toronto Raptors club? Yeah, the defense is a problem. They're 20th in points allowed, 26th in field goal defense. You're not gonna, that's not going to get you far in, in the playoffs. They're against the spread this year, 35-41-1. Uh, at home, just 17 and 23 against the spread. So uh, they, ought, they got off to a great start, and then they really leveled off since February 21st. Just eight and 15. They have a big injury. So Kyle Lowry is the, the leader in points, assists, and steals. He's out indefinitely with a back injury. Amir Johnson, who it's 57% uh, from the field, he's out with an ankle injury. Uh, this probably looks like a one and done team in the playoffs. Uh, the, they're in the Atlantic Conference. They're, 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 they have a nine game lead, but you never know it by watching this team. It's because of just such a weak division. So uh, I, I would say the Raptors would be a one and done team in the playoffs there. Yeah, they kind of remind me of a, a Carmelo Anthony Denver Nuggets team. They used to always get in the playoffs and lose. Um, and they just don't have. They had the guard play, like you said, but to get anywhere in the playoffs, you have to have a total team, and they don't have the forward and center positions uh, playing well enough to do anything that it would consider playing them in the playoffs as far as a series odds or uh, future odds for the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. Yeah, it's also a team that is physically and mentally worn down, or at least the star player is Lowry. He's been sitting out of late, has some calf and hamstring injuries. That's not good down the stretch. And their defense that you guys mentioned has just been awful all season, 26 in field goal shooting defense. One of the weaknesses is the seven-foot center. He's only 22 years old. He's inconsistent and certainly unreliable on defense. You really need beef come playoff time. I can't imagine a worse matchup for Toronto than to play of the Chicago Bulls uh, with the physicalness in the low post would be really a difficult for them. So I'm not giving them much chance either. A couple of trends to keep in mind when the Raptors are playing on no day's rest. That's not going to happen in the postseason, but down the stretch, they're 20 and seven over the total. And in the Eastern Conference, when they face teams in the East, they're on a five and all run over the total. So that's the way I look at Toronto. Little defense, plenty of offense, and a team to look at uh, over the total. 
All right, uh, let's talk about uh, some where you can find some of these uh, Vegas experts. Uh, Jeff, on pro basketball and college, a 35-16 and 16 run overall. That included that big play on Wisconsin Saturday against Kentucky. How can folks find your plays for the week? Well, you just call the LVSS, 1-866-575-8916. You're going to get a, a whole month of, uh, you're going to get NBA, uh, that's going to be part of the playoffs too, plus baseball, a whole month for only $10 on my five-star play. It's called LVSS, so one 8916 Also go to gymfives.com every day and you're going to get NBA and baseball. All right, and Zach, you finished the NFL season 43-23-1, and you just finished the college basketball season 124-91-5. and How can folks find you uh, for the rest of the season? Well, it might be a little slow through the summer. I'm not, I don't post every single day, unfortunately, in this, this time of year. But baseball and NBA playoffs, I will have plays up throughout the week. Can't say when, but uh, I should have some good value. If you're looking for long-term value from now through the end of the summer, uh, I'm your guy. You won't get every day, but hopefully we can get a few consistent winners. All right, and Jim Feist certainly ended the week with Duke. That ended an 8-3 and three college basketball run. It was Duke on Monday night. Also, with his NBA Games of the Year, 28-1 and one record. You can find baseball plays, NHL, and NBA plays every day at jimfeist.com, and you can call the number on your screen for specials. All right, that'll do it this week. Make sure you tune in next week for the NBA version of ProLine. Good luck with the games, everyone, and we'll see you.